Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Wednesday, September 3rd, 2014, around 7.40 p.m. in Berwicka, Massachusetts. The sun's going down. The crickets are chirping. Going to be a little bit of a nice night. Then the rest of the week going to be humid again and chance of thunder showers. Also, some news to report. The Boston Bruins have re-signed David Krejci to a six-year contract with $43.5 million. David Krejci was set to become an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. It was good that the Boston Bruins locked David Krejci up long-term. And this means that he's going to be probably going to finish the rest of his career with the Boston Bruins. The Bruins have a lot of um, great players signed up for long term so they'll be a contender for years to come in uh, in the Eastern Conference maybe a, to win Stanley Cup almost every single year and it's only 35 more days into the NHL season so everybody's so happy about the hockey season starting up especially in the, in the northeast part of the United States and in Canada and other places stuff should be an interesting NHL season and stuff like that and also like the Boston Red Sox are playing the New York Yankees tonight and the rivalry isn't isn't as big as it used to be because both the Red Sox and the Yankees are probably not going to make the playoffs this year and that's not good for baseball it's this will be probably this will be the first time since 1993 that either the Red Sox or the Yankees have not made the playoffs. That's in over 21 years. And it's, it's, it's hard. It's a shame because every single year the Red Sox and the Yankees have competitive teams. That's the way it goes. It's a down time for the Yankees and the Red Sox, but they'll be back up again sooner and later. We're going to see some great Red Sox-Yankees games in the near future. I, I could tell you that right now. The rivalry will be back in a few years when both the Red Sox and the Yankees will be fighting to see who's the best team in the national, I mean the American League. Okay? But that's about it on that. And my third and final video subject of the night is about the classic TV game show What's My Line? What's My Line was um, a panel game show that was produced by Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. It lasted 25 years, 17 and a half years on CBS from February 2nd, 1950 through September 3rd, 1967. That was shown on prime time on CBS and in syndication from 1968 through 1975. It was produced by Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This was their first big hit game show. And it was hosted by John Charles Daly on CBS and the syndicated version for the first four years was hosted by Wally Bruner, a TV newsman, and from 1972 to 1975 actor Larry Blyden hosted it. It was a panel game show which Marcus and Bill Tarman that was the creation of all the game shows. Most of them were panel game shows and some of the panels list Regular panelists on What's My Line over the, the 25 years it was on the air was Arlene Francis, Dorothy Kogan, Bernard Sheff, she she Steve Allen, and many, many others. And it was in the top 30 TV shows in prime time on seven times during its run on CBS. It peaked in the ratings in 1962-1963 with, with being the 13th most watched show in television in the 1962-1963 season. The game played of What's My Line was played by this. It was usually a like two regular people doing with a product or a service and the panelists would have to guess what, what was their line. And always John Daly, Charles Daly would say to these guests, would you sign in please? And they would always sign in their name. Sometimes they would have an X and stuff like that. And the panelist 
would have to guess what their occupation was or their line and they had 10 guesses to guess what their occupation was and if they if the contestant stumped the panel they would get $50 but in actuality these these contestants who came on for the occupations received $500 and that like the, the $50 was just for fun gameplay usually they would have two or maybe three three contestants and then they would have the mystery guest the mystery guest of what's my line could have been a purse could have been a famous person from all walks of life life and usually this was the last segment of the show and uh the celebrity panelists would have to be blindfolded because they didn't want to see who the guest was and when the guest signed in the guest the celebrity guest would have to disguise their voice because if they if they like revealed their real voice that would have been instant identification and the celebrity guest would get paid a little extra like seven hundred and fifty dollars and they would donate it to their favorite charity and usually some of the celebrity guests would use crazy voices and this and that and some of the celebrity panelists would like try to guess who it was and stuff like that and sometimes when they don't get get, get the guests guest they it's it was very funny when they didn't get the guest and stuff and usually when they guessed who it was they donated the rest of the money to charity as well like the fifty dollars and stuff like that the what's my line was very very successful it actually what's my line um, spun off several twists of like the panel show for Mark Goodson, Bill Tom, and like I've got a secret to tell the truth, um, make the connection, probably the 70s ma match game because of the panelist uh, was like a variation like you could have seen it from the thing with what's my line. What's my line has was had, had the famous quote is it bigger than a bread box that was said by Steve Allen and 1953 when he was on the panel when he said that to one of when he was on the panel like what's my line was the longest running primetime game show of all time 17 and a half years and at CB and it got canceled in 1967 because the, the president of CBS at the time says that game shows were like fading out on prime time they canceled on um, Early in the year, I've got a secret and to tell the truth from the prime time schedule. And on September 3rd, 1967 was the 876th and last episode of What's My Line on Prime Time. And the biggest surprise of the night was the host, John Charles Daly, was the mystery guest. And, and he was the back, he was the emergency mystery guest in case if a celebrity didn't, didn't show up and he said on the final show there was a couple of close shaves of him had to be the emergency's guest because the mystery guest arrived just just minutes before he was the mystery guest was going to be on the air and the panelists just got it eventually like Burnett chef Seth got it saying isn't he isn't Mr. Daly trying to fool us that was the greatest, greatest mystery guest of all time. He f tried to fool the panel by like being the guest and the host at the same time. And what's my line? Like became s successful on prime time. And Goodson Todman Production says this would be a great, good, good way to go on to syndication. It went into syndication the next year with new episodes with like Wally Bruna as the host and they had like Arlene Francis and Bernard Shep Seth um, appear from time to time and other panelists like Soupy Sales and Alan R. Alder and a few others and it lasted seven years in syndication Wally Bruna hosted into 1972 and then from 1972 to 1975 it was hosted by Larry Blyde and it ended in 1975 and and it has not, there has not been a remake of What's My Line to go on the air since then. There's been many failed pilots of it since, since 1981, and which is, you know, 
it's a shame because this is a classic game show that you know needs to be revived and probably be eventually revived one of these days on prime time and stuff like that reruns of what's my line was seen on the game show network years ago when they had the black and white sunday night on game show network back in the late 90s and 2000s and they were showing at 3 a.m in the morning for about like four or five years on GSN. The last time it was shown regularly on GSN was in two, 2009, but since Game Show Network does not own the rights to Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham game shows at all, except the select few, they, don't, they only pop up during Christmas time, but I think GSN should make a deal with the owners of the Goodson Tottenham Library and show what's my line on a regular basis again the black and white version at three in the morning we don't the world could live without maybe reruns of baggage with jerry springer because this that's been we ran over and over and over over again or family field so what the world could live without constant reruns of this let's show let's return like a classic game show on what's my line reruns at 3 and 3.30 in the morning on GSN. I think it would work. And also, What's My Line held the record for the longest running continuous game show on television f on t when they had the 17 and 7 months on prime time, but that their record was eclipsed by The Price is Right, the CBS version in April of 1991 when they surpassed that. And I enjoyed watching what What's My Line. It's one of the best game shows of all time. And it, the panel game show is just amazing. And it should be revived one of these days, in my humble opinion. And that's about it for What's My Line. I hope you get to enjoy these video blogs because these are getting to be more and more interesting every single day. I will be back tomorrow for at least three to six more video blogs. One of the subjects tomorrow I'm going to talk about is the history of WWE All-American Wrestling on the USA Network that ran from 1983 to 1994 and then two other video blogs that I'm not going to mention until the last post of the day. Friday is going to be a very good day on these video blogs because I have my video blog of like the the 10 ladies who have the nicest legs in the world. People say they know who's going to be number one, but I know who's going to be number one. I'm not going to tell you who she is, but people know who I'm talking about. Let's just say there's going to be, a, on this list I have, there's going to be at least three ladies named Heidi and two na ladies named Julie on that list. We'll f you'll, you'll figure who it is when I tell you. And others, you, you'll be surprised with the others. And we'll continue to do this more and more with the list. I have a couple of other lists I'm making up. And also, don't forget in later on, maybe in the MLB offseason, the top 10 players of each 30 of Major League Baseball franchises. And I might do top 10 list of the greatest pitchers of all time, the relief pitchers catchers, etc, etc, and NBA teams and NFL teams will follow. And that's about it. Don't forget, if you want to shout out, private message me, and, if it, and I'll shout out to you. Good night, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Bye now.